A limited five-view transesophageal echocardiography exam has now been described for use in the emergency department and critical care units during cardiac arrest. Here, using the HeartWork simulator, we demonstrate one recommended viewing sequence. The first and most important view of the exam, also described as the home view, is the midesophageal four-chamber view. Acquisition of the midesophageal four-chamber view includes finding the maximal area of the left atrium and a non-foreshortened view of the left ventricle. Maximal left atrial area is obtained by first centering the left atrium with probe rotation and then adjusting the probe depth to find the insertion level at which the left atrium appears to be maximal in size. The large wheel is then turned, if needed, to retroflex the probe tip. Retroflexing the probe tip will cause the insonation plane to find the apex of the heart. The endocardial surface of the cardiac left ventricular apex will appear stationary on the 2D screen once the proper degree of retroflexion is obtained. The base of the heart at the mitral valve will appear to descend towards the apex, but the apex itself will appear as stationary in the perfectly non-foreshortened view. While the correct degree of probe retroflexion will cause the apex to appear as stationary, it will simultaneously cause the left atria to be transected at a more caudad level. This will cause the left atria to be transected by the ultrasound plane at a level below its maximal diameter. This foreshortened cut through the lower part of the left atrium can easily be corrected by slight withdrawal of the probe. If this withdrawal in turn causes the left ventricle to be transected slightly above the apex, which can be appreciated by a reduction in size of the left ventricle in combination with recurrence of excursion of the left ventricular apex, it can easily be offset by further increase in probe tip retroflexion. This series of steps can be repeated several times as needed until both the left atrium and left ventricle are optimized. The optimized left atrium will be demonstrated by maximized left atrial area. The optimized left ventricle will have maximal length and an immobile apex. Note that not infrequently retroflexion maneuvers can cause the probe tip to lose contact with the anterior wall of the esophagus, causing loss of acoustic transmission and reception with associated image degradation or even complete loss. If this occurs, then a foreshortened view of the left ventricle must be accepted. Once the midesophageal four-chamber view is achieved, both the left and right heart can be brought to center screen by simple clockwise or counterclockwise rotation of the probe as seen from the perspective of the operator. A clockwise or right turn will demonstrate the right heart on the center screen. A counterclockwise or left turn will demonstrate the left heart on center screen. The next view, which is the midesophageal long axis view, is based on a properly acquired home view. Once the home view is perfected, the position of the big wheel should be left completely unaltered. This can be achieved by either locking the big wheel with the lock lever or by simply keeping the big wheel in its current position with the operator's thumb. It is also axiomatic to center the mitral valve and apex of the heart on an imaginary line on the center of the viewing screen. Once these criteria are met, then the omniplane is advanced to 120 degrees to create the next view. In the midesophageal long axis view, the left ventricle should be idealized for maximal chamber area and non-foreshortening. If these two criteria are not met, then the probe can be rotated either clockwise or counterclockwise until these criteria are achieved. At this point, no other inputs are made and all manipulations are held static. The operator should shift their attention to the aortic valve and ascending aorta. 
If the aortic valve and ascending aorta appear symmetric and fully displayed, then the view has been achieved. If the aortic valve and ascending aorta do not appear as ideal, then an increment of approximately 5 degrees of omniplane should be added. At this time, the entire procedure should be reinitiated, starting with rotation of the probe so as to reveal a maximized left ventricular area and a non foreshortened apex. Holding all manipulations static, the aortic valve and ascending aorta should once again be reevaluated. If the aortic valve appears to be symmetric and the ascending aorta appears to have full diameter, then the view is now complete. If not, approximately 5 more degrees of omniplane can be added and the same procedure reinitiated until the view is satisfactory both with respect to the left ventricle, aortic valve, and aorta. The next view is the mid-esophageal aortic valve short axis view. It is acquired by returning the omniplane to 0 degrees and releasing the big wheel to the neutral position. The probe is then withdrawn slightly to obtain the so-called five-chamber view. At this time, the aortic valve and the left ventricular outflow tract are placed exactly on the center screen and the omniplane is increased to approximately 40 degrees. The probe depth is now adjusted so that the three cusps of the aortic valve come into continuity. If the probe is out of plane, one must decide if the probe is in the left ventricular outflow tract or the ascending aorta. If the probe appears to be in the left ventricular outflow tract, then a slight withdrawal is made. If the probe appears to be in the ascending aorta, then the probe is inserted slightly. Again, the endpoint is the view in which all aortic cusps are present and in full coaptation. The next view is the mid-esophageal bicaval view. It is obtained by returning to the home view, which is the four-chamber view. In this case, the big wheel can be left in the fully neutral position, and concerns about foreshortening of the left ventricle can be completely neglected. The inner atrial septum should be brought on screen with rotation of the probe, and the probe depth should be adjusted to delineate the fossa ovalis, which is the thinner part of the interatrial septum. At this time, the omniplane should be increased from 0 to 90 degrees. This will bring the omniplane from a transverse to a sagittal position. This sagittal position will be congruent with the long axes of the superior and inferior vena cava. The probe must also be rotated towards the right chest to bring the omniplane to the vicinity of the cavus and the right atria. The rotation of the probe is adjusted to demonstrate not only both cavus, but also the thin fossa ovalis of the interatrial septum. If all three structures are not evident, three or four degrees of omniplane can be added, followed by limited probe rotation one way or the other which will help find the plane in space where all three structures are clearly demonstrated simultaneously. The final view is the transgastric mid-short axis view. From the mid-esophagus, the probe is advanced to the junction of the distal esophagus and the stomach. The junction will be evident by the presence of the coronary sinus which will appear as a linear chamber at the junction of the left atria and left ventricle. It can be seen emptying into the right atria. At this point, the probe is advanced further into the stomach, passing the mitral valve and stopping at the level of the papillary muscles. Frequently, some degree of anaflexion with the big wheel will be required in order to keep the probe crystal in contact with the diaphragmatic undersurface. The inferior wall laying on the diaphragmatic surface will appear closest to the probe in the near field. This view is important in evaluating tamponade, preload, afterload, ejection fraction, and regional wall motion abnormalities. It should be emphasized that transesophageal echocardiography is a complex skill, and viewing this video does not 
in and of itself prepare the viewer for the clinical application of TEE. After preparation on the simulator, proctored probe manipulation on live patients is required by most all institutions for privileging. It has been our experience here at the Echo Simulation Laboratory that in order to achieve facility with the five view exam, candidates should engage in a minimum of 10 hours of simulator probe manipulation time, strictly as the sole manipulator of the probe under continuous supervision by a qualified physician instructor. It has been our experience that candidates who attend courses in which hands-on probe time is minimized by either large or even small group size derive minimal benefit.